Hi, I'm Gina Kirshner. I'm the principal of the three primary schools, Elm, Vermont, and Hilltop, and I'm here today um, to talk to you about our new and improved report card that we will be using throughout this school year and beyond. Um, it is called a standards-based report card, and the example that is up here on the screen um, is the best example that I can I have found um, to explain what this means. Um, so I'm going to have you um, think about if you took your car to the shop um, to have it worked on, and the mechanic came out and told you your car got a B plus. You might be thinking, okay, well, it's in pretty decent shape. A B plus is good. But think about how much better the information on the right is that would be more of a standards-based report card where they would break down um, the report into the car's different components and give you actionable information about that. So based on the standards-based report card, I have a lot of information that I can then do something with. I can see here that my engine, my battery, and my transmission are in good shape and I'm really happy about that. But on the other hand, I can see that my brakes need attention and my tires are just okay. And so then that tells me that I need to start allocating money in my budget to make those necessary repairs. The same thing is true when we use a standards-based report card for students. The more specific information we have, the more we are able to take action and actually do something to help that child. Here in Wyoming primary schools, as we started working on the creation of our standards-based report cards, we really did that with three goals in mind. The first is we wanted to make sure we had a clear, comprehensive report for our parents. We wanted that information to be packaged in a way that was aligned and had everything in one place. We had the benchmark report, the classroom performance, as well as the engaged learner characteristics. And we also ultimately wanted to make sure that it was actionable information, not only for teachers, but for students and their parents as well. Hello, my name is Marta Stewart and I'm a third grade teacher at Vermont Primary School. So I'm here to talk about how the standards-based report card makes us better as teachers. And the standards-based report, report card does two things for teachers that really allow us to continue to best serve each and every one of our students. One, it provides and drives quality discussion amongst staff members to support kids and allows us to really come together to best collaborate to support each kid's needs and ways to continue to grow. Two, it also provides teachers with specific steps to provide explicit instruction to support each student's needs and progress within their grade level standards. On the next slide, you will see a visual of the process we took to get towards our implementation of the standards-based report card. You'll notice in the year 2021 to 2022, the Citizens Advisory Committee, or also known as the CAC, developed a research study with this goal intended to look more into the standards-based report cards. This team of community members, administrators, and staff members served all on this committee by gathering data and really connecting and consulting with other high performing districts to recommend and see the best needs and the ways to best support the needs and the progress of our students and how we can communicate that information with all of our stakeholders. In the end, after all this research and collaboration and data gathering, they, the whole study came back and provided a recommendation to the school board saying that a standards-based report card would be very beneficial to the primary division. Then in the year 2022 and 2023, all of the professional educators took a good look at this data and research gathered by the CAC and their recommendation to the board. And we took this information and to, started to develop our standards-based report card to best meet the needs of all of our students and really aligning it with those state level standards. Finally, in the year 2023 and 2024, we are so excited today to be implementing the standards-based report card to best serve all of our students and all the stakeholders in our community. My name is Erin Wood and I teach fourth grade at Vermont Primary and I'm here to talk to you about the core beliefs that we came to when developing our standards-based report card. So the core beliefs that we kept coming back to time and time again was that grades must reflect what students are learning um, the grades must uh, consider the use and purpose of diagnostic testing as well as formative and summative assessments. 
And that grades must separate um, academics from academic behaviors. So an example of that would be thinking about actionable information that we could use, um, like finding text evidence to identify character traits in fourth grade versus the ability to read 20 minutes and fill out how many pages we read on a reading log at night. And then lastly, uh, students must have the opportunity to take teacher feedback and then use that feedback um, in order to make constant improvement. My name is Jen Kreimer and I teach third grade at Elm and I will be talking about the grading scales on the report card. Our team worked to determine the scales for marking the report cards and broke it into two different parts, benchmark levels and performance levels. I will explain the difference in the connection between these two scales. Benchmark levels are determined by students' map assessments and indicate where a child is in comparison to peers at the same grade at the same point in the school year. The performance levels will indicate individual students' progress on specific grade level standards as determined by the state of Ohio. In the past, MAP reports and a separate benchmark report were previously sent home separate from report cards. That now, going forward, we have aligned the timing of our report card and our benchmark reports in an effort to synthesize the information our parents, for our parents and to provide a comprehensive look at each child's overall performance as a learner. As you can see here in this math example, um, our, our students in grades one through four will have a section on the report card marked benchmark. It is that way for math and for reading. In addition, there is a section called standards and we're gonna break those down in just a moment. It's important to remember that the benchmark portion of the report card breaks the year down into thirds and gives us a snapshot of how each child is doing compared to their peers at the same point in the same grade level. On the other hand, the standards portion gives you a look at how your child is progressing towards specific end of year goals, which are our Ohio learning standards. So now zeroing in on the benchmark portion of the report card. This benchmark portion summarizes how well your child is doing in comparison to other students nationwide at that same point in their grade level. So how do we mark that? Well, it's um, all based on our MAP test. This benchmark portion is a way for us to summarize for you your child's performance on a nationally normed test that we use here in Wyoming called MAP. Students take this test for reading and math in grades one through four. There will also be a family report, like the one you see here on, on your screen, um, that will be included in your child's report card envelope. And it will give you closer, a closer look at the information. The portion that we will mark on the report card is really just a summary, where we'll use our benchmark levels to help you interpret your child's score on math will help you understand whether your child's um, score is in the app benchmark range or where we would expect them to be, if it might be higher or above benchmark, below benchmark, or even on watch, which means they're right there on the borderline and we're keeping a close watch on their performance so that we can intervene right away. Hi, I'm Erin Hunley and I am a kindergarten teacher at Vermont Primary. I am here to talk about the standards and the performance level key. So for the standards, your child's teacher will also provide information about your child's growth and progress towards our grade level Ohio standards for each subject area. It is important to note that kindergarten will not have a standards report card for the first trimester. We will just do a benchmark um, benchmark paper for you guys so you can see where they're at that will involve a cadence, their um, uppercase and letter, lowercase letter sound, and letter sounds. Um, we think it's important for the kindergartners to get acclimated to school and get used to being a learner instead of uh, grading them on the re uh, standards just yet. The Ohio Learning Standards drive the work we do in our classroom. It is important to note that not every standard will be marked every trimester. On the other hand, some standards that are taught throughout the year will be marked across multiple trimesters. The performance level key aligns with the standards portion of the report card. 
In all three trimesters, we'll, we will be marking the report card to tell you where your child is compared to the end of the year expectations. It is important to note that our goal is to have an M by the end of the school year. We would expect students to be limited or progressing in some standards during the first and second trimesters. It is imp also important to note that once your child has mastered a grade level standard, we will continue to review on a regular basis and enrich student learning beyond the standard. Finally, there will be some standards that were not assessed in a given trimester. Those standards will be marked NA. Grade level teams are working to, I, together to identify which standards will be assessed and reported on each trimester, and we will be reporting consistently across the grade level. I'm John Hill, the assistant principal at the Wyoming Primary Schools. I'm going to talk to you about special reporting areas. So, your art, music, phys ed and Spanish will all highlight skills that they are teaching at a particular grade level. One thing is the special area performance level key. We will use S for satisfactory and U for unsatisfactory. On the next slide, we look at attributes of a learner. These are these academic behaviors that we are assessing your child on. So these are the skills that we need that are crucial competencies necessary for the 21st century. We are so excited to pull all of this together for you. Um, and so now we wanna give you the logistics of how this will be delivered to you um, three times this school year. Um, so on this slide, you're going to see the contents of your child's report card envelope. Um, you will see here that we have some items that will be sent home with every child. So the first two bullet points indicate items that will be in every primary student's report card envelope. The two beneath that that have the diamond shape bullet points will be in specific students report card envelopes based on their grade level at different points in the year. The bullet points that are arrows indicate items that will be in the report card envelope for just those students whose need indicates um, those, those reports. We have very carefully thought through the timing of when these report cards will go home to make sure that it aligns to our benchmark windows and those critical points in the school year when an update will be necessary. So what we have decided is that these will go home on a trimester basis. Students will receive these through the Thursday folder on October 26th, again in mid-February, and again, the week before school lets out. We did that intentionally to make sure that our families have an opportunity to connect with a classroom teacher before everyone leaves for the summer. Um, classroom teachers are happy to connect parents with extra practice and things they can be doing to continue working on those progressing and limited skills throughout the summer. You might be wondering, how do I get an update on my students' progress between those trimester report cards? And the answer to that is simple. It's through the Thursday folder. Um, all school year last year, and again this year, we are utilizing the Thursday folder as a, a weekly update for parents about how their child is doing on their grade level work. Um, so our teachers are working very hard to ensure that there's a minimum of four pieces of graded work in the Thursday folder each week and that will give you, an in, give you insight into how your child is doing between the report cards. Of course, you can always reach out to your child's teacher at any point if you have specific questions or are looking for more information. And that's it. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your partnership and your child's education.